Hi guys, welcome to the pronunciation channel. Uh, now uh, I'm going to teach you about how to express certainty versus uncertainty. In English, certainty is usually expressed with rising and then falling intonation at the end. Uncertainty is typically expressed with rising intonation at the end of a sentence. So imagine that I'm in a job interview situation and I'm applying to become um, a pronunciation teacher and the interviewer asks me this typical interview question. Tell me something about yourself. So obviously I remember my own qualifications. Um, so I might say something like this. I have a lot of experience I've taught pronunciation for 25 years. I've studied phonetics. I've also studied second language acquisition. Um, so those would be a list of statements uh, that someone might make to answer this question. Um, if uh, somebody were to be an English language learner, occasionally what they do is their intonation rises. Uh, especially if it rises very much, it may cause the person that is talking to you think that you sound somehow uncertain. So if I were to say, I have a lot of experience, uh, the person listening to me might think, you're not sure? Uh, I've taught pronunciation for 25 years. That would make the person think, you don't remember how many years you've done this? If I were to say I study phonetics, that would make the person again think, you're not sure if you studied phonetics. If I were to say, I've also studied second language acquisition. Um, so again, uh, the person would think, wow, well, that's kind of a unusual way to say that. So you're not sure maybe if you've done this or not. Uh, so of course there are situations in English where you want to express uncertainty. Uh, one good example of that is a yes, no question. So if they were to ask me a question like this, it might be with rising intonation. Do you have any experience? Uh, and I would say, yeah, I have a lot of experience. I've taught pronunciation for 25 years. Uh, so yes, no question. Often they go up at the end. Uh, let's say if I were to tell them, um, I have a PhD in applied linguistics. Uh, let's say for some reason they're really surprised or they didn't believe me. They might uh, ask me, you have a PhD? Uh, so they'd be, I, that would be maybe an inference of, oh, like they're surprised or they don't believe me. You have a PhD? Like, well, I don't believe you. You don't seem like the sort of person who would have a PhD or something like that. Uh, let's say the interview is about finished. I might uh, say something like this. Uh, I can go. Um, so I'm not sure if I can go or not, and I'm just saying that because I want to check if I can, okay? Okay, so again, um, let me give you uh, the normal way to say statements like this, and then, then the not-so-normal way, okay? So I have a lot of experience. That's purely typical. I have a lot of experience. That wouldn't be typical. I've taught pronunciation for 25 years. Typical, I've taught pronunciation for 25 years. Not typical. I've studied phonetics. Typical, I've studied phonetics. Not typical. I've also studied second language acquisition. Typical. I've also studied second language acquisition. Not typical. Okay, so remember, rising intonation at the end uh, is often used in English to express uncertainty. Okay, so that's all for now. Keep practicing.